Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis from FanDuel, here to break down the Daytona 500. What's going on, Jim? I'm all good, Greg. How could I not be? With the Daytona 500 two days away, the starting order is now set, which means we can fill out lineups for DFS, and I think it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty process-oriented field for this year. So I'm feeling pretty good about things heading into the weekend. How you doing? I'm good, man. I am talking to the FSW a award-winning NASCAR analyst. So I, I feel like these picks are going to be very, very good. Well, now they've got to be because I've got pressure on me. So thanks, Greg. If they suck, it's your fault. I'm going to put all blame on you if that happens. I'm not the one that won the award, Jim. That would be <laughs> you. Let's begin with our first driver. Uh, and he's pretty good here. That's Denny Hamlin, who's $14,000 on FanDuel, the number 11 car. Hamlin's clearly had success. Why is he going to do it again in 2021? Yeah, our focus for DFS at Daytona is try to find drivers starting further back who can finish well. And Denny Hamlin had ran out of fuel late in the dual race last night. So he finished deeper in the field, which means he'll start 25th for Sunday's race, which means he's starting right where we want him to. And as you said, this dude can win. He is the favorite to win this race as of right now. He is a two-time defending Daytona 500 champion. And that's not the lone success he has had at Daytona. He won back in 2016 as well, finished third here last year during the summer race. So consistently, Denny Hamlin, for whatever reason, finds a way to keep his nose clean, stay out of trouble. That translates into success and race winning upside. So basically what you want to do is start at the back of the pack, work your way forward, try to find guys starting further back who can run well and win the race. And then you run into Denny freaking Hamlin starting 25th. It makes things a lot easier. So, yeah, Denny Hamlin will be popular for this race in DFS, and that does matter at such a high-variance track. But, Greg, sometimes chalk is chalk for a reason, and that's the case here at Denny Hamlin. I think that for a cash game, he is the first driver you lock in. I am very okay being high on him for tournaments. Despite that popularity, you can differentiate elsewhere. He's a good process play. He's a great play overall. So I think that Denny Hamlin is a guy we should use, even under the assumption he'll be abundantly popular on Sunday. Yeah, the cornerstone of the lineup. It's obvious to put Denny Hamlin in there starting at the 25th spot. But as you said, it's Denny freaking Hamlin. And it doesn't matter if it's a cash game. It doesn't matter if it's a tournament. It doesn't matter how chalky he's going to be. With the success that he's had at Daytona, where he is starting, Denny Hamlin belongs in your lineup. Even the price here at $14,000, none of it matters. It's Denny freaking Hamlin. Put him in there. Up next for us, driving the number 19 car, it's Martin Truex Jr., who's priced at $9,300 here at the Daytona 500. He's had quite a bit of success here in the NASCAR series. And why do you believe that he has a shot not only to win this thing, but at least provide us some value here in DFS? It's pretty similar to Hamlin, and they're actually teammates, so that's part of it as well. But uh, Truex checks in starting 26, so he'll start alongside Hamlin for this race. And stacking is pretty enticing at Daytona, because what you'll see a lot of the times is teammates working together, manufacturers working together to work their way towards the front. So we'll see a lot of correlated finishes. Last year, Hendrick Motorsports swept the top two spots. The Daytona 500 has been Joe Gibbs Racing's playground, effectively, the past couple of years. Not just Denny Hamlin, but his teammates as well. And Shurex is part of that, too. He does drive for Joe Gibbs Racing starting 26th, and he doesn't have the same record of success as Denny Hamlin. But he did finish fourth year in the summer last year. He was second in the 2018 July race back when he was with Furniture Row Racing, second behind Eric Jones, who was at that time with Joe Gibbs Racing. So we know this team can do well. Truex also starting further back in 26th place. And I think that bodes well for him, especially if you do decide to stack him with Denny Hamlin. Now, the caveat here is, Unlike Hamlin, where he's kind of the no-brainer at the top, you actually have some pretty good options in this mid-range. You've got Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Matt Benedetto, Kurt Busch. All those guys have race-winning upside for this race. So I think that what I'm going to do, Greg, is differentiate a lot in this tier. Mix and match between guys like Benedetto, Stenhouse, Bush, and Truex, and try to pick whoever I want to use based on the other drivers in my lineup. If I'm using Denny Hamlin, I'm more likely to use Martin Truex Jr. If I'm using a Ford at the front, like Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney, Matt Benedetto makes a lot of sense. So I do want to take the correlated approach here and differentiate in this tier, but Given how much Hamlin I will have, I think that will naturally increase my exposure to Truex. So Truex, again, not as good here at Daytona as Hamlin, but that's the reason he's $9,300. So I'll take that discount, plug in Truex, and take advantage of that low starting spot in 26th place. 
it's essentially stacking whatever team you're going with really out top. If you like Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr. makes sense. If you're going with a Ford, some other drivers uh, make sense as well. There's a lot of drivers in this price range uh, that you could fill your lineup with. Jim ran, ran it down there, and, and I think it makes a, a ton of sense. Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr. with Joe Gibbs Racing, a team that has proven to be successful here at Daytona 500. Let's take advantage this weekend. Finally, one more driver to get to. It's Ross Chastain. He's $7,500, really cheap. Uh, number 42 is the car that he is driving. He's obviously your value play here at Daytona. Why is Chastain uh, the value play that you're going with? Again, it's where he's starting. He's starting back <laughs> in 34th. I think that's kind of the through line here, and it should be, based on the way things have played out in the past, based on historical data from the Daytona 500. You do want to stack the back, and Chastain fits that pretty well, but he fits that while also bringing some talent on this track to the table. I am skeptical of Chastain for the full season because I don't like his equipment that much, and we haven't seen a ton from him when he's gotten into full-time rides in other series. So a bit skeptical there, but we do know that Chastain can get around Daytona. He finished 10th here back in 2019 when he was with a team that was super underfunded, so a 10th place finish there, very impressive, and he did win here in the Xfinity Series back in 2019. So he knows how to get around this place. I think that's encouraging. He does have much better equipment now than he had previously, even if that equipment may not necessarily be the best. So Chastain, starting 34th, he has the ability to run well on this track type. You compare him with Kurt Busch, we talked about in that mid-range, definitely okay with that, and other Chevrolets as well, potentially. So Chastain works. Other guys down here who I think I, I are very interesting, Austin Sindrick is starting 39th. He is in a Penske car this week, so you can stack him with Brad Keselowski, Ryan Blaney, Joey Logano, Matty Benedetto. Cole Custer is interesting. Eric Jones. Tyler Reddick, I think, actually got a, an outright for him to win. And I think that uh, starting 29th, that's definitely enticing as well. And also Kaz Grala is $4,500 starting dead last. But for a team that should be pretty competitive here. So you've got options down here. If I had to pick one, I would go with Chastain at $7,500 due to his past performance at Daytona in other series. And I think that's enough to put him at the top of the heap. But again, a pretty loaded tier for this weekend. Not surprising to have a loaded tier here at the Daytona 500 where everyone's obviously putting in their best to, to try uh, and win the crown jewel here of NASCAR. We'll see what happens ultimately here this weekend. Ross Chastain, one of many drivers here that are in this range that are worth considering putting into your DFS lineups. That's going to do it for us here at the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, we appreciate the time. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Same to you, Greg. Hopefully I can get you to toss in a couple of lineups just for funsies and see what happens, and uh, we can talk about it next week. Listen, all it takes is one, right, to be successful. Why not mine when I'm following the FSWA award-winning analyst? That's, that's you, Jim Salas. I appreciate it, Greg. Thank you very much, and have a fantastic weekend. And to everybody watching out there, have a fantastic weekend. We are off on Monday for President's Day, but we'll see you back here on Tuesday for another edition of the fans will hurry up.